the four steps to success. The first step to success is good ideas. You must be a collector of good ideas. Here's where my mentor did me the greatest of service, and that was keeping a journal of good ideas. Here's what he said. Don't trust your memory. What classic information. Don't trust your memory. If a good idea comes, jot it down. One, so you can review it. Two, so that you capture it. It won't be lost. So all those years back then, I started keeping a journal. I got journals you wouldn't believe. Little cheap ones when I first started. Remember the Greg shorthand? Little books, little spiral things? I, I used those. You could say, you must be broke. Yes, you know, I wasn't doing very well, so it cost, I don't know, a quarter or something back then. Now my journals are expensive. This one cost $42. And I wished it would have cost more because I'm doing really well. <laughs> my journals. But uh, if you look at all my journals, you can tell how my life was going. Say he was poor here and it looks like he was rich here. And then he was broke again. And now it looks like he's rich again for sure. But here's the key. Something to pass on to the next generation. The collection of ideas that made you healthy. The collection of ideas that turned your life around. The collection of ideas that uh, caused you to learn extra skills and got the extra income. The wise use of your resources, the ideas you found on how to do that. Think of passing this on now to the next generation and the next generation. This is so valuable, but mostly now primarily for your own study. So you can go back over what you've collected and in a now different place, same ideas, but now that you're in a different place, you'll see it in a whole new light on how it will help change your business, help change your career, your future, relationships, and all the rest. Keeping a journal, right? Now this is for serious students. Non-serious students don't need to keep a journal. But for serious students that are serious about their health and serious about their future, serious about gathering things to make a contribution to others, keeping a journal, that's important. A collection of good ideas, first step to success. Here's the next step, a good plan. You gotta have a good plan, you gotta have a good health plan. My mentor asked me when I'm 25, Mr. Owen, what's your current plan for your financial future? And I said, I don't have one, right? And that was obvious. He said, you got to create a plan, a good financial plan. If we finish the seminar tomorrow and, and you lingered a while and gave me the details of your current financial plan for the future, would I get so excited about it, I'd go across the country and lecture on it. And you say, no, Mr. Owen, you probably wouldn't want to lecture on my plan. And my next question would be what? Why not? Have you reached this point in your life's maturity and you don't have a plan that's got you up early and keeping you up late that you're excited about unfolding? Here's one of the first things you must do if you're a parent. Build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. Build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. Now there's other protections that a parent must engage in. But here's one of the first ones, since it's so possible living in America. A financial wall around your family, nothing can get through. Got to have a good health plan. You know, you can't be out of breath after the year 2000. You got to have the vitality, right? You got to have the breath. You got to have the vitality. So you got to have a good health plan. You got to have a good financial plan. So number one is good ideas. Number two is good plans. Here's number three. Learning to handle the passing of time. That's one of the big challenges in everybody's life. Learning to handle the passing of time. And then here's number four, the solving of problems. And that's what life is all about. Taking them on, finding solutions, executing, recording progress. You see, that's what's challenging, to be involved in a situation that makes you grow. If that situation is success, keep growing to be bigger than your fortune. If that situation is failure, keep growing until you're bigger than the problem. Keep growing, keep becoming, keep doing it until. Now there are two qualities that can increase your chances of success. Two very important qualities. Number one, patience. Number two, persistence. Patience is what? Learning to handle the passing of time. Now, once you've had an appetite for success and you start going for it, now you've got to learn to handle the passing of time. Here's why. 
it takes time. It takes time to build a life. It takes time to build an enterprise. It takes time to get through school. It takes time to develop and grow. So give your enterprise time. Give your business time. If you're in management, give your people time. If you're a parent, give your kids time. Don't be too short, too quick. Give them time. Now, not forever, but time. It takes time. Here's the ultimate challenge. You've got to have patience with yourself. It takes time to make changes in habit and discipline. It takes time to correct old errors in judgment and to finally give up old blame and pick up new responsibility. I'm telling you, it took me some time. So have patience with yourself, number one. And number two, while you're dealing with the passing of time, number two is to keep doing it. Be persistent. Be tenacious. Keep doing it until. As long as you are patient and persistent, it's hard to elude success. As long as you maintain patience and persistence, tenacity, there's only one person, just one person that will draw the line between success and failure. And that person is you. So be patient, be persistent. You need both patience and persistence together. And here's why. Lack of patience is probably the worst enemy of ambition. While your ambition keeps growing, keeps moving, keeps looking for new ways to succeed, Impatience tends to grow frustrated. Impatience won't allow for persistence. Impatience wants to give up. Impatience calls discouragement failure. But your ambition won't let you give up so easily, not if you're persistent. What others may call failure, ambition calls a learning opportunity, a chance to make adjustments along the charted course to success. Ambition knows that the longer the achievement is in coming, the more valued it is. So let me give you a few aspects of patience. There are six aspects of patience, and here's number one. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. Let's say you're opening up a restaurant specializing in fresh seafood. You're all excited to get going, get the money coming in instead of it all going out. You're all excited. So because you're all excited, you want to open early. Your impatience gets the best of you. And so you do open before your scheduled grand opening. Customers start coming in. They're all excited about this new great restaurant. And everybody wants some fresh seafood. They're all ordering fresh seafood from the menu. But now you panic. You haven't got any. You're not ready. The fresh seafood shipment won't come in for a week. Impatience has just killed the restaurant. Your impatience just lost you credibility in the marketplace. That's number one. Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be done. Here's number two. Remain alert, even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Make sure that your patience allows you to keep your eyes open and ready for opportunity. Keep looking. Number three, keep preparing for opportunities, even if there's a delay. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should, keep your disappointments at bay and keep getting ready for opportunities. Be prepared, always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Number four, impatience. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. Number five, if you're waiting on the decisions of others, be patient. You cannot control the decision-making abilities of others. Don't be frustrated about what you have no control over. And number six, take a vacation from your ambition. If you've been working day after day, week after week, month after month without a break, take a vacation from your ambition. 
the ambition will have a stronger pull than ever when you come back to it. Persistence is patience in action. Persistence is creative, always looking for new opportunities. Persistence is courageous. It doesn't give in to fear. Persistence is hopeful. It doesn't let discouragement through the door. Persistence is positive. It keeps you on track with your plans and your goals. Patience and persistence are both required for success.